Welcome to this week's PHP Development Podcast by Matthew Kamani. For any questions about this podcast or any other resources, visit www.c2bsolutions.co.uk or email php at c2bsolutions.org.uk. We hope you enjoy. Let's talk about our comparison between uh, TES and, and PHP. Um, well, to start with, I would compare Node and PHP. Okay. Um, because TypeScript is basically just a subscript of JavaScript. Uh-huh. Basically, you know, if you must have heard of Flow. Flow. Um, what's the other one? There's an, there's another a couple as well. Um, they're basically just providing overhead t- typing for JavaScript uh-huh. because there uh-huh. isn't a way of defining a type. Uh-huh. Um, so like you just have objects, arrays, and strings, numbers, floats. Well, not really floats, but yeah, you have those sort of base types. Right. But there's no way of making a class and that sort of thing. Yeah. Whereas in ES6, which is ECMAScript 6, which is JavaScript, uh-huh. what is it? Well, it is JavaScript, but it's like the new, newer version of JavaScript. New version, yeah, yeah. Um, ES6, you can build classes, and you can extend from classes, you can make abstract classes, and TypeScript just kind of adds on top of that and yeah. allows more freedom how to define things. And then you can make interfaces to say that this object that's being passed to this function must have these methods and they must be of these types. Like if you right. use React, you must have heard of um, prop types. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's essentially that. Um, but nicer and cleaner. Right. As well as you can use it everywhere instead of just defining a component. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you compare Node and PHP, uh-huh. uh, PH, like I said earlier, like PHP is a, a really short term frame uh, process. Yeah. Whenever you run a PHP command, let's say you you make a file called myfile.php. Yeah. If you started that file up, like common practice for any PHP framework, you would start that file and then you would um, go and get the composer autoloader. And then that would, inst- uh, would require all the files that you need. Then let's take a framework like, like Symfony, which <laughs> then goes and takes all those classes and configurations and goes and makes an instance of absolutely bloody everything. Yeah. Um, so not only are you starting the process, but you are literally going to get every file that you've ever written in this, in your application and framework, Mm -hmm. then you're going to instance every single class into an object, into your framework. (laughs) Then you're going to start the request. What is it? No, the kernel, which will then go and create a request object of the actual request from HTTP. Right. Then you find the class that corresponds to the URL, um, which the controller, sorry, that corresponds to the URL. So you've got to go through all the controllers and find that, um, the corresponding class, then find the action. And then you need to find the dependency injection. So you go and find all the, the required um, objects that you need to pass into that. So you need right. to re- reflect the action and the class to find all the things and put them all in the right place and then call it. Then you get the actual thing that you want, response body, and then you give that back to where it just came from, and then you start the whole process again. Right. So you start from the top, and then you literally come back down to install, um, get all my files, instance all my classes, find my controller, find my action, put all the things in the right place, and then find my response, and then give that back. Right? Right. Whereas with Node, (laughs) you kind of have that in a different sort of structure. Because it's designed to be a long-term process, you have, Mm -hmm. as soon as you start up the process, Uh you start by obviously calling your file name or whatever, like server.js. That will then um, go and include all the imported files that it needs. Mm -hmm. Then it will not, if you're using, well, if you're using Express, it doesn't really instance everything. You just get what you need at that Mm -hmm. time. Mm Then whenever someone makes a request to that process on a port, which is port AC, you are cloning the process. Mm -hmm. So it's in a, what is it called? The node event loop cycle. So whenever someone comes 
through onto that port and says, hey, I've got this payload for you, it clones the actual process out so that everything that's already been instanced and ready to use is ready to use in the clone. That goes through and then is sent back to the client. So it's a very different way of working. There's no yeah. like to load everything all over again and bootstrap the whole framework before yeah. you've even done what you were actually required to do and then send it back. Right. So instead you're just literally finding a function, cloning a process and then, yeah, no, sorry. Cloning the process, finding the function, doing what the function does and returning it. Interesting. Yeah, it's a really strange way of working, but it's, it's a lot nicer because there's a lot of um, functionality you can uh, like handle a lot better with Node than PHP. Yeah. Um, like for that instance is already one of them, but obviously it has its drawbacks. Let's say you throw a fatal exception somewhere and the whole process then dies, then it has to restart itself. And then in that time that it's restarting, you don't have any port open to accept any requests. Mm. So That's you feel so you, you would choose node of a PHP, obviously. Um depends on the job that I'm doing, but more yeah. than likely, yes. I would okay. pick node. Do you think for um for most developers, if you're pretty good PHP developer, it's quite easy to transition over to node? Um yeah, if you're using type TypeScript, definitely, um, because with TypeScript, you obviously can do dependency injection, so that's the same. You've yeah. got classes, um, like a framework that I use called Nest.js. Um, mm -hmm. That is very similar to Symfony, and I've done a talk on that. Yeah. I've got a slide somewhere. Now that you actually um, said that... I've done um, comparisons. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, go on, go on. <laughs> I've done, done like some comparisons in the code of how things are configured, and it's just really similar especially to symphony because well symphony 3.4 anyway because um you have like a root um decorators uh -huh. no, sorry annotations in symphony uh -huh. they're really similar to decorators in uh -huh. next and the right. way like you define a controller and you could define your roots and the methods etc interesting thanks for listening to this week's podcast for questions feedback suggestions or topics you'd like us to cover in the future please email php at c2bsolutions.org.uk. Thank you.